the final thing, and obviously they left the best for last. The Batman trailer two. I didn't think I would be more <laughs> excited for a film for this film than the excitement I felt for the first trailer that we got last fandom. Where do we start? I, I, Brian, tell me, because I've seen this trailer over and over again, and I've seen other people react to it on YouTube and stuff, and everybody feels the same way. Everybody feels the same way. What did you feel when you saw this trailer? Oh, man. Um, yeah, so first off, full marks. This is clearly the highlight of the event. We talked about it going in, uh, that they would carry the tone. But a lot of things, and I, I love to throw it back to you on a couple of these. Very action-heavy trailer. Maybe yes. that caught me a little off guard okay. for something that has been pitched as the detective story. Yes. We got a lot of Batman in action. Yes. What did you think of kind of the, the fight sequences that we were shown? I was very excited. I, I, I really liked the, the mood he was creating with where the fights were taking place, some of the effects. But I was surprised that they showed us that much of him fighting. When he was fighting in the club, it reminded me of the second the Dark Knight when he uh, was fighting in a club. I think it was yes. a brief. Yeah, he, reminded, comes in, he, yeah, yes. yeah. he grabs Moroni after yes, the... Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. It reminded me a little bit of that. Um, but a lot. The The scene was captured in a way that you can see Batman's movement and, and his mm -hmm. movement. So you can see that a lot clearer. It's a great point. So he, the camera is zoomed out more than in the Nolan verse, where one yes. of the criticisms was it was very hard to see what Christian Bale was doing. Here, exactly. you have a sense of scale yes. and the odds against him, which yes. I thought was really cool to see. Yes, zoomed exactly. out fights. Yeah. Um, do you want to? start i mean do you want to start in the beginning of what we saw in the trailer or... yeah sure we can, go, we can go through it yeah there's a okay. lot of stuff to talk about here so in the beginning obviously we see paul dano's character the riddler waiting for the cops to arrest them obviously this is a you know this is part of the plan so to speak um well i i think the question mark in the coffee i think is sort of an you know something that he's this is very early on and so i think this is just starting to I don't know if he's starting to think about who he is and how he wants to use that, but it, I think this is, he's sort of forming his identity with that and playing around and, and with the question mark and all this other stuff. Um, obviously they didn't show his, his face. Cool. But you see then um, Batman at the, uh, the, the the place where they have the Riddler held, and I first didn't I couldn't make out what he said. Did you did you initially make out what he what he was saying to him? Is it is what have you done? Is that what he's yes, saying? Yes, yes, yeah. He yeah, said, "What have you what done?" That's what he's saying. Yeah. Yes. But you see what Matt Reeves wanted, and that is rage. Yeah. And you see that throughout this trailer, rage in his eyes, in every shot, other than the shot where he's talking to Selena. You can tell that he's feeling Selena. Yeah. But he's cool and calm and collected, stoic. He doesn't, he's not going to show any emotion. She, he's letting her grab his face, whatever the case may be. But he is serious. Reminds me a lot of the comic books and some of the, um, um, the interactions in the animation uh, shows that we've seen in the past. If he was not wearing the Batman suit, so, but but behaving and doing everything else you see him do in the trailer, would you actually think he was a hero? No, because he he is crossed every time you see him, 
And I think there's that shot we've seen before where he's wailing on the one guy. But this time we, the camera was spun around and you realize Selena Kyle's watching him do it with this look of like, oh, what, what is yeah, wrong with exactly. you? He plays in this trailer much more as a villain. Someone to be afraid like of. One, almost like the Punisher. Yes. More than Batman. He's it's brutal. really seeing the Batman suit that basically keeps you rooting for him. Yes. And in, in some of these scenes, which I think is fascinating. fascinating. Yes. Yeah, man. When Selena Kyle, she's looking at him and she's like, yo, this dude is nuts. And but you see every 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 shot of him being when he's fighting, when he's electrifying that dude, I think. And you see the look in his eyes when he's doing it. I can't, I would imagine that those were done in several takes until Mary's got what he wanted. So we see that. So um, what did you think of, uh, what did you say or think to yourself when you saw Pattinson in the bat suit? This was immediately after we see the bat signal. I don't, he looks he looks fine to me. I, I guess he he's ta- he he's shot in a way that makes him seem very tall. Yeah. Even though weirdly, like Affleck is six four in real life. I think because he was so bulky and the suit was so bulky, he played shorter. Yeah. That seems seem very lanky. Like yes, uh, you know, like when you see especially Zoe Kravitz, who I mean, is she's so thin. Yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. staring up at him like he's like a foot taller than her. I, yeah. I don't know how tall he actually is on set, yeah. but he looks really tall. But I also kept telling, my, reminding myself, remember, this is an unfinished Batman. Yeah. This is the suit and the tech he has basically made for himself. We get a glimpse of its bulletproof kind of tactile nature when he's fighting that he can take damage in a way that maybe some of the other bat suits didn't. But it's almost like it's made to be somewhat imperfect. So I kind of like yeah. that it didn't seem totally seamless. Um, and I think that's part of the point. Like he's kind of got like more of the tools like on his, that are visible on his wrist. And yeah. I was like, I, that fits with the theme they seem to be going for here. I don't know. But it, his eyes are great. I mean, that's yes. part of a big part of being successful in Batman is how does your mouth look and how do your eyes look when they put he, the... He has a jawline for it. Yeah, he has a jawline and his eyes look menacing when he's behind yes. the mask. Yes. Um, what else stood out to you? So the whole thing about the rage thing, which I think is really interesting, is th- there's a line in Dark Knight. It's funny, you were mentioning the club scene in Dark Knight. There's a line where, you know, he's talking to Maroney and Eric Roberts' character says, you know, well, everybody knows there's a line you won't cross. Yeah. And with this Batman, you get the sense that the bad guys are like, we don't know that there's a line. Like yeah. this guy, any given night, any given fight, might be willing to kill any one of us. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's a variable in this that I think is powerful. Yeah. And when he talks about fear as a weapon, that's part of what he's talking about. Like he yeah. has to prove to these, to the gangs and the criminals that like I'm willing to do whatever it takes if necessary. And we're only in year two. So I, I really like that. I loved Gotham. I don't know what you thought about how Gotham is being shown, but the kind of London rain, yes. darkness, but then also even showing it at sunrise, like how it looks in its scale and scope. I like, like the color I pattern. love the choices here. I love yeah. the choice. It was like yeah. he took the Burton Gotham, but then he dialed down the, the wackiness yes. and then like turned up the kind of seediness and kind of grim, you know, like really greasy kind of reality of it. I yeah, really yeah. like the choices yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Um, two things. The penguin looks and sounds amazing. Alan Farrell, whoever did his makeup, those, those guys are geniuses over there. I hope they get an award for the work oh, that they've done. We thought to, I mean, I got to give it up for the, the idea of casting. I, I did yeah. not. Who, who had the vision to be like, you know, yeah, who could right? do this? <laughs> Colin yeah. Farrell. What? Yeah. Based yeah. on what? Like, yeah. But he he seems to be having an absolute blast. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
And it's, it's funny. We got our first look uh, at Alfred, which was cool. Yep. Um, you see the scar in his face. Mm-hmm. This is a guy who's been in it. I don't know if that scar is. I'm, I'm sure that scar is. I'll say this. Alfred has been around the block. Um, and because whatever his past is, he understands Bruce and he's going to support him and mentor him somewhat in, ter- in terms of controlling the rage that Batman has. Yeah, and you uh, see that in that, that interplay. You know, it's interesting. And so in Dark Knight, Michael Caine kind of worries about Kristen Bale's Bruce when he comes home and sees all the bruises on his back and saying, you know, know your limits, right? And he says, Batman yeah. has no limits. Yeah. And this one, they have a little bit of that where he's like, if you don't stop, you're going to have no one left. And then Pattinson kind of, I don't know if they're exactly in sequence, but he turns to him and says, I don't care. What okay, about have to me. Yeah. And I think that's an important, you know, at least clue into the way this is being set up for when he's not on the streets, like what they're debating and arguing about. And, and you're right. I mean, it's weird. Like Alfred kind of has, he kind of has this one. He still has a similar costume as Ulysses Claw had when he was caught. But it's all cleaned up and yeah, it looks a little yeah. bit a little bit neater. But then later on, when he kind of says the way he says dear God toward the end of the trailer, he shows a much softer side. Like that, that I thought in that moment. So you get the sense like this this is an Alfred who cares a lot, but an Alfred who's also got some tough love, you know, I yeah. think in, in him too. So no, that was exciting. And the brief glimpses of the Batcave, Batcave looks cool. I mean, we don't get a, like a true sense of it, but it's yeah. pretty. I think one of the disappointments in the in the Nolan verse was they really never fully fully developed the Batcave. Yeah, and this one actually looks like it's pretty tricked out. Yes, which is kind yes. Of cool. Yeah. Um. There, there was listen. We haven't in this trailer. We got no Jim Gordon. I thought that was surprising. No, we haven't gotten Falcon one yet. shot. One yes. shot of him holding a gun. That's it. Yes. We haven't gotten Falcone yet. Nope. Um, that further creates more excitement to see those performances because we really haven't seen them other than the the initial Jim Gordon talking, um, reading the, the Riddler clue that was left for Batman or perhaps he was, you know, he was asking Batman about about uh, uh, that uh, clue that he left. Yep, that's all we got. So I'm looking forward to seeing that and I'm excited to see his performance. Um, but regards, re- regarding um, Gotham and the way it's shot, that one scene where he's falling off the building and he's like, he's sort of a, you know, swinging through Gotham yeah. or whatever. That looked amazing to me. Yeah. That looked amazing to me. And there was, a, did you see, a, I'm pretty sure you noticed a shot where he's sort of like falling, but not sort of falling. He's yeah. like sort of free falling. Yeah. That looks, it was so quick, but it looked, it looked amazing, man. He looked amazing. What did you think about that? The swinging um, and, and him falling. What did you think about those shots? Yeah, so Batman in action, I don't believe there's a single slow-mo shot in this trailer. I believe every sequence of him fighting, swinging, jumping, I believe is all in real time. The only slow-motion shot that I the end. called it two. One is whatever is detonated that sends him yes, flying yes, backwards yes, and yes. then when the batmobile comes out of the cloud of fire and it, he's they walking slow to, it down and, and, and then and they speed he, it up when he when he hits yes the thing. and it's also when he's walking towards him that, that the correct, last, uh, correct, is, correct. Yeah, yes but yeah. the actual action of batman is being played at least so far all in real time so you're just experiencing it as if like a human being was doing this stuff yeah, which is again, that's a choice. But yeah, the part where he's swinging and the speed at which he's going past the building, you're like, yeah. whoa! Like, what is this? Exactly, exactly. Um, but what you else? like that because, like, you know, 
if I think back to like the Tim Burton Batman where you know Keaton does the grandiose kind of floating down it's like that looks the grand really entrance cool. all the time, come yeah. on man if you're trying to stop criminals that'd be useless right so yeah, this yeah. is more like hey I gotta get from point A to point B a <laughs> lot faster than the bad guys I need to be able to travel on a zip line basically yeah. at you know at a speed that nobody could run or drive at yeah yeah, yeah. the gadgets are going to be very interesting to uh see what we do see them and how he uses them and 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 how he because in and you know in animation he's running in the rooftops and stuff like that he's doing all this other stuff he's like when he needs to get to point a to point b he may not have his car he with him he he takes out his grappling gun and he's out right so it's gonna be interesting to see that but i'm also dying because they haven't shown us either of these but I'm dying to see him as the detective. They've been very careful to not show him sourcing clues, pouring over evidence, yeah. you know, debating with whether it's Gordon or Alfred or Selena, like, you know, trying to put the pieces. Now, they did show the one overhead shot where it's like sins of the father. They kind of gave you that yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Venn diagram, if you will. But I'm really looking forward to that. I actually feel like some of the best scenes in this movie are going to be like those classic kind of mystery or detective films like almost where like it's a totally different motif but remember when like owen wilson and tom hiddleston were doing detective work on the chaos events and they're just sitting across a desk looking through files yes. but you're riveted by the conversation of them finding these little clues i yes. can't wait for that part of this yes, but i feel yes, like yes. they're keeping that that doesn't play in a trailer so they're yeah. keeping that like under the under wraps yeah um I want to see that dialogue between him and Gordon. To me, that relationship has always been uh, special and has always needed to feel special. And 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 that's one of the things, Brian, that you sort of, we talk about rage. We talk about that soft spot that, that Alfred uh, emits when he says, dear God, this is going to be like very emotional mm -hmm. I agree. right um and i think that is the point and that's why this uh, perhaps w one of the reasons why this film was so difficult because it's not your regular comic book film right this is unlike any other batman we've ever seen in that we're gonna see a lot more rage from batman you know when Christian Bale, when he first donned the suit, that you know, there was only the Hulk Hogan. What you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> is is <laughs> you know that's we didn't. That's all we saw. We didn't really get that emotion from from him. He was just you know Batman, and look, he looked cool doing it. It was cool. Christian Bale's portrayal of Batman was cool. He was the rich boy player. Well, he did that well, but we never really got. Or we've, or we've never really gotten into the mind of Batman and what he's really going through and how he's dealing with this. Obviously, he's dealing with it by going out and beating criminals up, but how emotionally invested he is and how over the top he may be going, and you said it, he's still green in terms of his career and where he's at and how he does things. But... Is, is uh, those those are one of the things that I'm really looking forward to, and I, I I'm really thinking that this movie is gonna is gonna is gonna be nominated for some awards. Well, they I mean, so Nolan made the choice in he kind of took the role of Alfred and split it across a couple of characters. So if you think about like in in Batman Begins, young Bruce is not only parented by Michael Caine. But when he first meets Gordon as a lieutenant, Gordon is kind of like a father figure when he puts the coat around him. There's an yeah. age and generational gap there that never yeah. really gets fully bridged. You know, they become yes. friends. Yes. But yes. Gordon is set up more as the older mentor. And of course, Lucius Fox, same idea. Yes. So Nolan chose to put the young Bruce in the middle of these older kind of father type figures. In this film, Alfred clearly has that role, but Gordon doesn't. Like my sense is it's much more their teammates. They're even though they're not the same age, they're much more like peers. 
Yeah. And that's a different dynamic. You're not leaning yeah. on that guy as much for advice. You're trying yeah. to get, you're trying to catch this serial killer. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's, that's going to set up a different dynamic. Now, what did you think of uh, Zoe Kravitz? Like we get a first taste yeah. of how she's playing Selena Kyle in this. And, and what do you think? Perfection. Perfection. She looks really good, by yes. the way, as the, as the, like, as the way she's moving and like the way she's kind of walking through scenes. It's and the way she's yeah. talking to Batman. Yeah. It reminds you of Catwoman talking to Batman in the yeah. comics, uh, in the animated shows. She, she cast it perfectly and, and she just like when you describe Selena Kyle and you look at Selena Kyle in the comics and animation, she's sexy in how she talks to Batman is very flirtatious, but she, there's a confidence there. Like mm -hmm. I can take care of myself, which she says yes. <laughs> to him in the trailer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you can, and you can't help, but this tiny little woman, how can she take care of herself? And who knows what Batman is thinking? You know what I'm saying? Perhaps that's why she tells him, you know, I can take care of myself because he probably thinks, you know, how, you know, how can, you know, not how could she do this, but you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think she's, I think she looks great she, so far. Her interaction with Batman is spot on. Um, and I can't wait to see more. Yeah. I think Fife, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer's version, which was obviously very well regarded at the time it came out, was much, yes. she was drawn much more from the Jack Nicholson Batman school, which was you take, or sorry, Jack Nicholson Joker school, which was you take qualities of the comic character and then amp them up because yeah. that was the Burton verse, right? In a yeah. way that was cool to watch, but not necessarily realistic. You know, she was kind yeah. of over the top in her yeah. um, sensuality, in her voice, all that sort of stuff, which worked. For that yeah. style of Batman, yeah. Hathaway's version was a little more cynical. Like yes. it wasn't really it. it the, the seduction aspect was kind of more turned down. Yes, and it was much more kind of about you know her view of the world and kind of the you know the kind of the I guess in that movie like the caste system, the war of the classes, and so yeah. she had a much harsher kind of dynamic even though yeah. she ultimately had that attraction to yeah. uh to bruce um yeah this is definitely the smoothest yes version, to your point from the comic this is the like i can blend in which they show her in the one action scene kind of gliding through it in yeah. disguise yeah but then when i'm one-on-one -on -one, it's it's got a crackle yeah it's got a crackle and it does yeah. like in this you get you get that sense of even though he's standing there stoic he's like half attracted, half uncomfortable, like yeah. being humanized. I don't really like it, <laughs> but I can't look away. Like yeah, even, yeah, yeah, even yeah. though he's just standing there, you get that feeling. And then he kind of look, you wonder what he's looking at. That one scene where he's, he's looking down at her and then he looks up almost yeah, feel yeah. like there's something bad's about to happen to both yeah. of them. But yeah. no, it look it, it looks really good. I, and I think the absence of a fully developed costume actually works in this case. I yeah. think it would have been a mistake to have her be, you know, in black leather or armed with something that was truly developed as opposed to what seems to be another homemade, yes, homemade outfit. Yes. So. Um, was there anything else other than, I mean, I think we pretty much covered the entirety of the trailers thus far. I mean, so Farrell said he's only in this movie for nine minutes. So do we get a shot of every one of his scenes in this trailer? Because he's in the trailer a lot. That was yeah. my other takeaway. Yeah. Um, I think we're, what, what we're seeing is most likely his um, beginning for up, the upcoming trilogy. And he'll have obviously much more to do in those films. And I think this is more of an introduction to the penguin rather than, I mean, cause so far I love what Colin Farrell has done so far. And it's like, yeah, I hope it doesn't feel like a letdown that we didn't see more of him. Maybe but, more excited for his show on HBO max. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
For sure. 100%. 100%. That's going to be, yeah. So yeah, I'm not mad at, 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 um, um, I think, I mean, this, what, he's only in there for a little bit. I mean, we only got him to say a couple of things. I, I'm pretty sure all of these things lead up to something and he's going to have, he's going to be in those scenes where Batman shows up. So it's going to be cool. I don't think it's going to be, I think everybody's going to go out wanting more from the Penguin and not in a disappointing way. I think, so there's a, I am very curious to see how long this movie is. There's a rumor that it's close to three hours. I would be shocked if they allow it to go to theaters as a close to three hour cut for an, even though it's Batman, it's still the first movie of three. Yeah. I have to think it's going to be two hours, 20 or less by the time they're done. But there is the rumor floating around there that, that the real, the real cut of this might be close to three hours. That. That could be a lot. <laughs> I mean, ooh, how do you feel about that, though? I think it's tough. I mean, I, you know, I think if you, you know, very simplistically, if you look at No Time to Die, that's close to three hours, but that's the culmination of a journey. Yeah. And then you look at the box office that's doing, it's doing excellent box office, but, you know, the opening weekend for Venom 2 was still much bigger. And part of that's the Venom 2's 90 minutes, you know, that. Yeah. Day. So I do think when you're leading off, I mean, I know they, you know, I, I know 20 years ago when they let off Fellowship of the Ring, that was three hours and it worked and it worked brilliantly. But that's it. And Titanic is close to three hours, but that's a small club. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to think this is two and a half, 220 by the time they go to theater and maybe they drop an extended cut on HBO Max at some point. But I also just say like watching this material as good as it may be it might be a punishing watch if it's like three hours like you may walk out of there feeling like you were in the fight I, I almost don't mind it though Brian I almost don't <laughs> mind it I almost don't mind it because we are going to uncharted territories when it comes to the character of the Batman and that is his mind and what he's thinking yeah. and you know, there are a lot of people we haven't heard from yet in the in the movie. And we haven't heard that dialogue between Gordon and Batman. We haven't seen Falcone and what he's up to, because I'm pretty sure he's sort of like a background character, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, remember, part of this, we'll see how much of it comes to fruition, but part of this concept is that we'll kind of just move through this universe and we might come across familiar names and faces but they won't necessarily be characters in this film yeah so i i wouldn't be surprised if some of the other rogues gallery just just kind of pop up in passing and you're like oh there's that guy oh there's that guy like victor freeze there's some reference to like a number of these that that will then get fleshed out in some combination of the gotham tv show and in the rest of the trilogy I was going to ask something. How interested are you to see? Obviously, we're not going to get to see too much of it now because, again, he's still coming into his own with regards to Batman and what he has to, out in the daytime, show himself to be to sort of make that differentiation. How interested are you in his in his portrayal of Bruce Wayne? Because so far, in and out of the cowl, we've seen Batman. Mm-hmm. We saw him in the sunglasses reading the paper. We don't know in terms of his character of Bruce Wayne, how much of it is the fake Bruce Wayne and not the real yeah. Bruce Wayne. So how interested are you in his portrayal as Bruce Wayne? Yeah, I'm definitely interested. I mean, I think, like I said, I think Bruce Wayne is really two characters in one, right? So your yeah. point, he's, it's the one he shows to the world and the one that he shows to his inner circle. Yeah. And so I, I do think, I think this trailer, like I said, they made a choice to go heavy on the action and heavy on Batman in action. But I would suspect that you're going to see a lot more of Bruce in action now it could be at night 
could be out with Gordon, not necessarily in the suit, could be in the daytime hunting for clues, just, you know, in his trench coat and looking like, you know, his billionaire self. So yeah, no, I think, I think a big part of the lifeblood of this movie has to be Pattinson's ability to sell you on each aspect of Bruce. Yeah. You know, and the rage comes out when he's in the fight. Does the rage come out when he's just you know, on the street? Like, does it come out or, or, or is he completely restrained? Like, these are all questions that I think are critical to how we, you know, evaluate his performance and how excited we get for, you know, two and three. Do you think we get any flashbacks to his uh, parents? Well, I'm going to say yes. I'm, I'm kind of hoping no. <laughs> but I, I feel like the fact that the, the logo is made from the legacy of that almost it implies that we probably will get some some reference to it that's played out in, in the film. But I hope we don't see a shot for shot yeah, start yeah, yeah, to finish yeah. replay of the gunning down. But I'm interested in seeing how he reacts to that memory when he's triggered to remember that, right? I want to see how he reacts to that thought because obviously he lives with that. You can see it in his eyes. You can see it when he takes it out on the, on the criminals. So... It'll be interesting to see what he is seeing when he's out as Batman or when he's normally out in something that he sees or, or seeing parents with their kids. I just want to see if there is an emotional reaction to that, um, to that, uh, to that, 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 that event in his life where, you know, anything can trigger him and how he, how he, reacts to it i'm just looking forward to seeing if that comes out and, and in what way it plays out obviously we know how it plays out as batman but as bruce wayne how does he look you know well i think this film where the, 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 the where this film overlaps with the snyder verse half black depiction of batman is this idea of you are joining batman sometime after he has made the commitment in in obviously Affleck's case it was 20 years into yeah. his tenure as Batman here it's yeah. only one year but that means the movie takes on the responsibility of having to communicate to you how we got here yeah. without actually showing you everything of how we got here right so Affleck clearly came across as jaded kind of beaten down you know the, the, more vengeful like he they they made those choices to show you like well this is what 20 years of doing this did to him yeah man. here we've only got one year but i think we're going to get a lot of flavor for what's happened in that year yeah even if they don't flash back and show you necessarily what happened there will be conversation there'll be mentions of you know, remember when like you know what you know, remember when you did this or like what they, they have to do that to give yeah. you the context for where an anchor Bruce Wayne in where he is today yeah. and why quite honestly, you know, we, we didn't talk about Paul Dano as much because they, they probably can't share that much screen time. Although we see them in the jail cell together or the jail together, but like, wh why is the Riddler bothering to try to ensnare a one-year-old Batman in this yeah. kind of game? There has to be motive for that. Right. So the, yeah. there's something there we haven't been made privy to. You think he knows who he is? I think there's a chance. I think yeah. there's a chance they might have borrowed a little bit of the Bane mythology to, to feed this story. That yeah. makes some sense. Yeah. But yeah, there has to be a catalyst for what kicks this serial killer idea off. Yeah. We, have, we don't know what that is yet, but it's got to be powerful. Listen, man, I'm going to reiterate it again. <laughs> this movie is going to break records. Um, and again, I'm going to say regarding Jeffrey Wright's performance, he's going to get an he's going to get nominated for an Oscar and an Emmy for the same character. Something I don't think has ever been done before, if I'm not mistaken. I, I've never heard of it like that of that sort of uh, win for the same character. I haven't heard of that, so that's a possibility. But DC Fandom 2021. For me, 
like everything else in the comics in DC, Batman always saves the day. <laughs> this would have been a disaster. <laughs> Without that, I'm telling you, if they weren't, if Batman was done, no, nope, they're not doing any more movies for whatever amount of time. If this wasn't being done, this would have been very, very, very disappointing in, 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 in what they showed there. I'm sorry. It, it just was. You know, the only good thing or great thing or, or most exciting thing to come out of Fandom 2021 is the Batman. You may be curious and interested, perhaps even a little bit excited to see some of the other stuff that they showed there. But nothing comes close. Absolutely nothing comes close to the Batman. Brian, final words. Yeah, I mean, uh, March 4th, 2022. I think we're getting, you know, it's not summer, but I think it's going to have the feel of, of the summer blockbuster when it when it hits and i think if the i still stand by what i said I, I think this film i think this film will be critically acclaimed i think it will do fantastically well i think its legacy will grow i just have this feeling that the legacy of this movie is going to grow after its release you know it, it not a great analogy but i, I do feel like Batman Begins became over, underrated over time. And now when you go back to it, you can appreciate kind of some of what was accomplished. Because that was not actually a massive box office hit. Yeah. It was fine. It made money, but it was not what the next two were. Yeah. And I like I Batman think, Begins. I think this will have that feel where we look back five and ten years from now. And some of the things that are great about it almost don't get fully appreciated uh, next year. And you mm -hmm. look back on it and be like, man, they they really they really went for it and they really accomplished some some bold things here. And mm -hmm. then like this movie will almost get like a second and third life because of that. We'll see where the trilogy goes, obviously. But yeah, I just had that feeling. It's gonna be like big at the outset, but almost like underrated in a strange sort of way. I just don't see that. I just don't see that. I think we were I was excited for Batman Begins. I like what they did in that movie. Um, but this one, I haven't seen an excitement like this for a movie since, remember 89? You couldn't go anywhere without seeing a Batman t-shirt. It was everywhere. You didn't get the same sort of situation with Batman Begins. And ba no, and that not trilogy. even close. Not even close. Batman this, was being rehabbed in yeah. Batman Begins from yes. where we were in Batman and Robin. Yes. This, I think, is building an excitement similar to 89. And I think it's going to do massive numbers. I went to see Bond this weekend, and the theaters was almost packed. I was surprised. I was surprised. Even for Venom, I was surprised. This movie, if things go well and things continue to happen as they should and things sort of normalize, so to speak, I think we're going to see massive numbers for this film. I just think we're going to see massive numbers. Yeah, Definitely no, over 1.3. Oh no, I think that I mean I think we're we're on track for the box office to be fully back by the time this movie opens. So there'll be no constraints. And you're right. I mean the, the, you're definitely seeing box office around the world for movies now start to move back toward pre-pandemic levels. Um and shoot, I mean if Venom can do 90 in a weekend, I mean this better be able to do 150. Yes. Um, you know, but I just yeah, it's not I I just was trying to think like I I still I think there's I think there's certain things about movies where you appreciate them in the moment but then you don't necessarily understand their greatness till after they're gone and yeah. there's something about this that has that feeling to me where it's like it has so much in it and they're they're choosing directions or they're talking about choosing directions we haven't seen before that i, I almost don't like i said i almost feel like you're gonna watch it you're gonna love it and then like you know 
five you know years later you're gonna be like man that yeah. movie was even better than i thought at the time yeah. um and i don't know it just it just has that in a way like some movies don't age well like uh x2 is a good example a movie we that was great in the moment yeah but kind of 15 is 20 it? years later you're sort of like yeah that's sort of not doesn't really hold up anymore you know i think this is kind of the opposite i think it goes the other way we'll see but i think that i think that has a lot to do with the current situation in the mcu and what's coming up next i think people have sort of forgotten because that Oh, yeah, X2 was was fantastic and all, but now people are just more focused on what will be, what will be in, in within the MCU. So, um, and I and, and not to, again, Chris Nolan stuff was great and stuff, but the excitement level for this is so much more. It's almost at where the Dark Knight was with the Joker. Everybody was like, I can't wait to see this movie. Dark Knight, the Dark Knight, film there was an excitement there because of what we were going to see with um the joker this is but also his but also ledger's death yeah loomed yeah. large over that true 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 that buzz too yeah but this is a film where i think the emphasis is more on batman than anything else yeah um and and the the, the supporting cast so this movie is going to be huge. March 4th, it can't come soon enough. Um, we, there's still a lot to talk about. It. We we didn't do a, a nerd report on the, the, the news of the week for last week regarding Spider-Man and Tom Holland saying that this might be the last one. I mean, we've talked about we've talked about this in the past and we've said where this is going. So there's nothing new. There's really nothing else to talk about it other than so the, it, 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 it ain't a surprise. Sony wants to do what he wants to do. That's it. But. Well, I will say, my only comment on that is. Yeah. If you put the stinger in the credits of Venom 2 the way they did, and then it's not Tom Holland that he gets to fight. Yeah. Come on, man. That's. Yeah. Yeah. That's not how it's done. Yeah. That's not how it's done. But no, fan, <laughs> fandom was the news. This was the biggest event. Yeah, yeah. This was the biggest this, season to kick yeah. off things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for today. Um, thank you for joining us once again. Please hit that like and subscribe button, hit the notification bell, share it with your friends. And if you're a fan of the Batman, tell us what you thought about the Batman. Do you think it's gonna break records? What did you think? What was your favorite part of the trailer? Let us know in the comment section below what you thought. Um, Brian, thank you for joining me again doing this show. We're talking about the Batman. This the, the Batman shows is coming. The Batman show, once that movie comes out, I think we're gonna be probably talking about that movie for like a month <laughs> and nothing else. There's listen, when March 4th comes, no other movie would dare. It has to be like an independent movie where. I can't get into the theaters. This is the only thing that's playing. I want to go to the movies. Let me just go watch this. But if you if you want to make money that weekend, don't put it out that weekend. It, you, it has to be low budget <laughs> to make money. You know what I'm saying? Where you get the old folks coming in and watching, but because I think it is going to be crazy that weekend. Um, but yeah, that's our show for the, uh, for today, and we'll see you next time on another gym report.